Well, good afternoon. It's my great pleasure to speak with you about how forests have changed over the past 25 years using results from the Global Forest Resources Assessment for 2015. Some of you have heard the words of a wise man who once said, forestry is not rocket science. It is much more complicated. The results of FRA 2015 show how complicated forestry really can be, much farther than just changes in forest area. Today, we'll give a little bit of an introduction to FRA 2015 and encourage you to explore other parts of the assessment. These are some of the outputs from, from the assessment, including the regular reporting, as well as a special issue of the journal Forest Ecology and Management. This product came to pass because of the hard work of 286 national correspondents and alternates, some of whom are here in the audience today. Thank you. They were supported by over 6,000 inventory people and data analysis. And we were supported not only through the regular program resources of FAO, but from resource partners, Canada, Finland, Japan, the United States, and the European Union. We are grateful to all of you for that support. In addition, we, for the first time, created a partnership called the Collaborative Forest Resources Questionnaire Partnership with these six institutions to share data to reduce the collective uh, data collection burden to collect once and use many times. So, the reason you're here is to, to hear a little bit about how forests have changed. But before we get there, I think we really need to think for just a moment about how we have changed. Because, because forests are very much dependent these days on changes in our societies. So I'd like to go over a few of those changes very briefly. Since 1990, we have increased in population by 37%. We have increased per capita wealth by 2.5 times, although some of you may not have felt that yet. We consume 40% more food now than we did in 1990, and we have reduced total forest area by 3.2%. You can say that that is a consequence of some of these major societal changes that caused the influences on forests to change. In addition, during this time, we have, we have taken more wood from the forest, 200 million cubic meters per year, more now than in the year 1990. That has uh, many implications, but in, the high, in high income countries, unfortunately, oh, it's, it's there. High income countries, most of that goes to industrial uses, packaging, construction, uh, furniture, pulp, and in low-income countries, almost all of it goes to, to firewood. So the complexities of, of wood use that relate to these wood removals are great, and they vary tremendously across the globe. 129 million hectares net have been converted from forest land to other uses in the past 25 years. That, amongst other things, that means that CO2 emissions have been, in the most recent years, 1.5 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year. We'll talk about some of the other implications in a moment. We have reduced the total area of natural forest by 239 million hectares over a 25-year period. And we've planted and increased in the planted forest area by 110 million hectares. That's where the net of 129 million comes to pass. Again, as the Director General mentioned this morning, an area that's about the size of South Africa. At the same time, the, the area that is uh, in forest, that is in legally protected areas, increased by 200 million hectares, and most of that was in the tropics. In addition, 150 million additional hectares were declared as uh, having biodiversity conservation as the primary purpose. And of course, we changed the extent of global forest. An important thing to remember is that though that area has been reduced, the rate of reduction has been cut in half. In other words, it is the rate now, which is 0.08%, 
is less than one half what it was between 1990 and 2000. And it is less than one-tenth the rate of human population growth. The numbers in 1990 were about 4.1 billion. We're now just under 4 billion hectares. That means that uh, there's less forest for everybody. In 1990, there were 0.8 hectares per person, and now there's 0.6. Some of you may have felt that difference. It's important to think about forests the way they are, rather than the way we would like them to be. We've lost, yes, we've lost 7 million hectares per year of natural forest from 2010 to 2015. And some of those areas are important, biodiversity areas and production areas. But at the same time, we've lost, well, not lost, but we've had 50 million hectares on average that have been burned. 50 million hectares burned. Think about the consequences for carbon, for biodiversity, for productivity, for livelihoods from that amount of area burned. So it's really not just forest area that's important. It's also other disturbances which make a, a lot of difference to many forests. The second point I'd like to leave you with today is that the expansion of forest area continues in the temperate and boreal zones, and the contraction or the reduction in forest area continues in the tropics. Something that's not particularly new, but it's an important trend. The countries in brown all show some forest loss. The countries in green show some forest gain. Not all of these countries within those categories have the same uh, magnitude of change. Greenland, for example, hasn't lost nearly as much as a number of other countries, as you might expect. So the biggest losses were in South America and in Africa, and the greatest gains were in the temperate and boreal. Over 60 countries and territories reported increases in forest area during this period. Let's talk for just a moment about the tropics. Agricultural expansion occurred between 2000 and 2010 in the tropics at a little over 6 million hectares per year. At the same time, tropical forest loss was about 7 million hectares per year. A very close relationship between these two, as we've known for a long time, but these numbers show it quite clearly. So if we really want to change Uh, the rate of tropical forest loss, where do we need to think? We need to think about agriculture first and foremost. In terms of the way forests are distributed, 93% are natural, 7% are planted forests. But the share of planted forests is increasing from 4% in 1990 to 7% in 2015. This is where natural forest change is occurring. The red areas are covering the 25-year period, the the changes in thousands of hectares, the green areas, uh, the areas of gain. For the next period, from 2010 to 2015, the map shifts a little bit. Uh, Some countries have smaller change, and a few countries went from uh, losses of natural forest to gain. Planted forest from 1990 to 2015 uh, looks about like this, this amount of change. You can see most of the the planted forest change, again, was in in the north and in Asia. But there's good evidence of change in Latin America and Africa as well. The past five years look like this, similar but a little bit different. Not so much change in Africa. Indeed, the rate of planted forest expansion is decreasing. So fewer hectares were planted in the last five years than had been planted in the previous five. The third point I'd like to share with you during this brief time together is that our ability, our capacity to manage forests sustainably for the long term has never been stronger. Never in history has our ability to manage forests been better than it is today. So our capacity is there, one might answer, ask, rather, is the will always there? One would hope it is, but we are all also somewhat certain that it's not. One indicator of, of 
Sustainable forest management and improvements is the amount of area that's declared as permanent forest. 54% of the world's forest is, is thought to be, said to be, permanent forest. It's a good start. We have also a number of other indicators. Some of them are in the report and not presented today. All of these indicators increased. So supportive policies for sustainable forest management occur now in almost all countries, representing something like 98% of the world's forest. Management planning has increased, forest monitoring through inventories has increased, and forest management certification has increased. Let's take a look at a few of those. Information is an extremely valuable commodity, isn't it? In every endeavor. In forestry, it's certainly no different. The world's forest has now been inventoried in 112 countries within the last five years. Those inventories have either been initiated or completed. That represents 77% of the world's forest. That's a huge investment by governments, one that's often underappreciated, but it's an extremely important one. Forest certification, certified forest indicating those which have been measured and certified as being sustainably managed went from just 18 million hectares in the year 2000 to over 400 million hectares in 2014. Most forest area now is under management plan, and that is half split, about 50-50, between production and conservation. So there's much more management planning now than there was in the past. Interestingly, the majority of these plans require and include social and community involvement. Now, this is one of those areas where it sounds pretty good, but we know that not all these management plans are actually implemented or monitored. So there's still major room for improvement there. Well, the FRA has traditionally looked at the past. We've always looked backwards, and this FRA is really no different. I encourage you again to look at the FRA in detail. But we also took a quick look at the future. We asked countries, to tell us what they thought their forest area would be in the year 2030. 73 countries responded. 27% indicated that their forest area would likely decrease and by about 65 million hectares, or 6% of their forest area. The remaining 73% of these countries indicated that forest area was likely to increase, about 144 million hectares or 10% of their forest area. So on balance, these 73 countries were overall positive about what's going to happen with the extent of forest in the future. To recap, the, for the rate of forest area loss has been cut in half in the past 25 years as a result of the hard work of a lot of people. Forest area is expanding in the temperate and boreal zones but it continues to decline in the tropics for reasons we talked about, primarily agriculture. And our capacity, which should give us hope, is better than it has ever been before. It's well documented, um, and it's a really a, certainly a cause for hope. This is just an introduction to the FRA. I've had to skim the surface pretty quickly. But I would encourage you, please, to look at these resources. How Forests Are Changing is the synthesis report um, that is available in the exhibition hall at the FAO Pavilion. It's available in six languages. The special issue of the Journal of Forest Ecology and Management has 13 papers, some very good ones. Independently written, 75% of the authors were outside of FAO. Um, they're very good independent peer-reviewed papers. I would encourage you to look at those as well. They're available either through Science Direct or through the FAO FRA website. We have a desk reference, also in six languages. It gives you the country data in some detail. And 18,000 pages of country reports. So if you need something to help you sleep, there's some material there. 18,000 pages is quite a chunk. And finally, the Forest Land Use Data Explorer, which will give you the ability to examine the FRA data, download it, compare it with agricultural data trends at the same time. So for the first time, we're serving up the fraud data together with agricultural data and land use change data. 
I think you'll find it a very useful tool. Again, all of these tools and documents are available on the FRA website. We haven't had much time together, but I hope you are at least aware of how much data and information there is in the FRA. There's a, there's a real wealth there. But we all also know that information without application is really just history. In this case, it's certainly just history. Interesting history, but without investment in action, it, it's not particularly useful. So, we have the opportunity this week to talk about sustainable forestry, about investing in a sustainable future. I hope that all of us will put our heads together, help motivate, help lead, help conduct uh, investment and action to improve forest management for the benefit of present and future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you.